welcome back. Uh, you join us in the midst of Treat Yourself Tuesday. Every Tuesday is always Treat Yourself Tuesday. I don't know why, it's just what I love to call it. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we're going to be here with you for the next couple of hours. My name's Joe. Look, my name in lights. Woohoo. Uh, and we are going to be, of course, journeying into softer side in this show, which is awesome. It's kind of that one moment of the week where we maybe just take it down a notch. Uh, you know, it's all about soft craft. So we're taking all of our needle crafts. Uh, we've got a little bit of crochet. Sometimes we have a bit of knitting. We've got some embroidery on the show for you today as well. And I think it's the perfect starting point. Uh, maybe if you've been a crafter, maybe you're not a crafter at all, but you want to get into any kind of soft craft, then the softer side really is the place for you because we have great deals on everything you need to get you started, but we also have amazing stitching superstars uh, with us in the shows as well. Uh, and I've got one of those with me today. The lovely Bernie is here with me. Bernie, you always bring a smile to my face. How are you doing today? Hey, you, Joe. I'm really well. I've been in this one already with Craig, teaching him a oh. little bit of build a block. It was really good fun. Um, so yeah, I've got loads of goodies and I can't wait to go through everything with everyone. Uh, it's going to be so, so ex exciting. There is lots uh, to chat about in the show today, lots of great deals, but we need to have a little bit of a conversation together. I, I understand as well that you might get a lot of questions uh, from the Softcraft show. If you want to get those questions answered, or you want to have a bit of a gossip with me, uh, then you can do that by going to Crafters Companion, uh, or, sorry, Crafters TV on Facebook, uh, go over there, or if you are on YouTube, then pop, uh, search Crafters Companion uh, and pop into the comments there and I will uh, get those questions answered for you if I can. Diana is in from Indiana. I can see Lynn Harvey, Donna, who is in Texas. Patty's in Michigan. And Fred uh, is in as well uh, from a very wet and windy California. Uh, right then, uh, first up, let's take a look uh, at what we've got coming up in the show uh, today because there is absolutely loads uh, on the show. What we're gonna look at firstly is the quilting pattern. Oh, hello. <laughs> Good start. Uh, quilting pattern reference guide there, as you can see. $23.99 uh, today or $19.96 uh, if you want to go for this. It really is awesome. I know we're going to get to this later, Bernie, but quick sound bite. What is it about this that is, it makes it so popular? So this is a great, it's a positioning tool. It's also a ruler, so it's made of acrylic, so you can use it if you've got your rotary cutter and you're squaring up your quilts, you can use it with the rotary cutter as well. But basically, it's got all the grooves in here, and you're going to get your fabric. The other thing what we've got on the show, Joe, is the heat erasable pens, which are absolutely fantastic, and they're a perfect job for this. You've got the grid lines on here, so you can position it, and then you can go in here, mark all your lines that you want when you're doing your placement. You've got a centre mark in there. Obviously, I'm doing this rough. I'll do it properly later because I'm going to use it in one of my demos as well. But when you take it off, you've got that grid section there that you can start putting your applique down. If you're positioning something for embroidery as well, use it. So it's, it's like a placement tool, if you like. But I love it. And I say I have it always on my table at home, apart from when I'm bringing it here. It's always out because I always look and think, oh, I just want to do a five inch square in the middle of my fabric. I've got the grid on there that I can use it. So it's a really handy one to have and 20% off as well. So mm. definitely worth getting one of these today. Can you use it to cut? Can you use it in conjunction with your rotary cutter, like around it and, and down it as well? You can round the outside. So it is, see, it is acrylic. Yeah. So I've got it just on the edge of my fabric here. I'll just, I mean, this is squared up anyway, but I'll do a little bit. But yeah, you just put it on there. Awesome. And cutting it round, there you go. So you've cut Perfect. now, you've got that total square, or beautifully square corner. Awesome, love that. If you want to grab it, it's on a great price today uh, to get it into your basket. Now, we're going to look next at these lovely things. Uh, these are uh, <coughs> your um, border guides that we are looking at. So, four uh, different styles in here for you, uh, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, what you're going to get is you're going to get the geometric wave, you're also going to get the decorative petal, the jewel and the heart, and if you've always dreamed of being a French mime, 
then fear not uh, because you're also going to get those gloves in there as well for you, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, so all of that, £54 or $78. Only the second time uh, that you've seen these on air as well. I've got uh, a couple of ideas here of some of the stitching patterns or the quilting patterns that you're able to add into here uh, and you can see this so yeah great for doing uh, bigger things like quilts and runs and stuff like that but also think about smaller um smaller projects as well uh lots in this one bernie uh, what we're going to be using these for what primarily uh, is their use these ones so primarily they use if you are putting anything if you're quilting anything so you're putting two layers of fabric and then you've got your wadding in the middle you need somehow to hold all those layers together so you can wash it because if you don't, or even a lot of handling, the wadding can come apart um, and then it ruins your project. So like you say, whether it's a bag or a cushion or a quilt or a table runner, anything like that, you've got to quilt it somehow. So having that decorative pattern and being able to put your ruler foot into that guide and stitch around it, you won't, you're not going to wobble. It's going to be perfect shapes every time. And it's actually going to you know, enhance your projects as well. I, I absolutely love it. I know those samples you've got there, I've got some more over here later when I demo them. And I'll show you some more as well because you can get some fantastic results with them and they're so easy to use. Fantastic. If you want to go for those, uh, as a Platinum member, 20, uh, 43 20 or 62 40, uh, that's a Platinum saving of 27.75 and almost $40. If you did want to cherry pick though, don't worry, any two of them, 28 pounds or $40. So however you want to get hold of them, uh, you've got a great price. Now, it's really lovely to have this collection on the show for you. Well, they're not a collection, they're all available individually. They are UK only though, uh, I am afraid. So uh, apologies for US viewers. Uh, one of them, in fact, so Fabrico is available uh, in the US. But we're going to start off with uh, the Stick and Stay, which is this one just here, $7.99 uh, if you are in the UK. Then we also have uh, the Paper Pattern Spray, which is this one just here. Uh, again, that one is £7.99. Uh, then we have got the Fabric Shield, which is this one just here. They all have very different uses. We're going to have a spray school in a minute, so don't you worry about that. Uh, the next one as well is the Mark Away which is that one just there. Uh, and the one at the top, I love this one, uh, that's the Fabrico. This one is available in the US as well, 14.99 or 19.95. What do they all do? Well, I could tell you, but I'm not gonna do that because we've got a stitching superstar. Uh, we've got like a, we're gonna do, is this right, Bernie? Like a mini spray masterclass within our softer side. We are, how exciting is that? So exciting. Uh, so we often have the sprays on the show, well, to be fair, all of our shows, we have the sprays on because we use them just as it, you use them without thinking sometimes, you go, I need that, I'll use that, I'll use that, I'll use that. But uh, what I thought would be nice to have a nice little section where you can see and maybe give you a bit more insight on how you use them because you might think, oh, well, I don't need it. But then you start thinking of the other uses of them as well and you know you're going to absolutely love them. The first one I'm going to use is the Mark Away Spray. So this one, the best way I can describe this is it's chalk in a can. So what it's going to do is put a white chalk mark on your fabric for you then, you can use your quilting stencils with these. I've actually brought one of our um, monogram stencils that we have um, or we've had previously, but what you want to do is transfer this. So what you can do is obviously use your heat erasable pens, but depending on the colour of your fabric, they may not show up. So if you've got a black fabric, none of those colours are going to show up on there. So you have an alternative thought, well, we can't leave people where they can only use light fabric if they want to use the pens. So we have this, the mark away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape this down with a bit of masking tape, if I can find the end. Lockdown nails. I'm sure everyone, <laughs> if you've got lockdown, lockdown nails, nails, let us know. Have you seen I'm, Debbie's lockdown nails? I have. Uh, no, oh, yes, I did. I saw them last night. They were oh, really sparkly. Well, you want to get onto, you want to get, uh, you, oh, well, you can't, can you? I was going to say, you want to get around and get her to do your nails, or you want to get her in, but you can't social distancing. No. Nah. Nah. So I wouldn't care. I was Maybe gonna if get she them came around, you put them out the letterbox. Yes. Oh, she did them through the letterbox. How about that? <laughs> have you got a, have you got like a letterbox in your front door? Or have you got a separate I one? I have, but it's at the bottom. Oh, that's fine. Right. You'll, you'll, just, the hall. Have, you'll <laughs> just have to get down and get them through the front door and she'll do them there. 
And then my neighbours are going to be looking at Debbie on the other side, out the front, thinking, what on earth? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, think that's, that's a great a, idea. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Debbie know that that uh, we need to arrange that. But yes, yeah, so oh, she's 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 a diamond, our Debbie. She's she probably be up to doing that. Well, both they? our Debbies. They are. I, mean, the, the, I was, I saw our Debbie Fisher on Sunday when I was in, and then I'll see Debbie Robinson later on today because she's in. Yes. So yeah. with this, it's got like a ball bearing inside. So you just need to give it a good shake. So I'm gonna shake it away from my microphone so it doesn't drown you all out. Uh, or, as Debbie Fisher referred to them the other day, Bulbarians. Bulbarians, <laughs> ah. I'm not ah. sure what they are, where they and come then from. You're just going to do short, sharp bursts. Now, also, what we've got on the show later on is some embroidery threads, and this is again another use for it that you can embroider. So it's not where you're going to do your hand stitching or your machine stitching. You can actually use your embroidery threads. So we can see there, when I take that off, you see how that has now transferred oh, that I love mark. That. Obviously, you can mark off the rest of your fabric, however, it just does soft. Oh, and perfect. I've actually um I got some black fabric and I I doused it to be honest. I it was thick. It was about an inch, you know, when we say you've got an inch of snow and you've just had a little sprinkle. It was really <laughs> thick on there, and I put it through my washer on a 30 degrees and it came out clear with it all gone so you can brush it off just brush away and it still leaves a bit of a faint mark so don't worry when you're stitching if you've still got oh well I've, I've wiped that off now with my hand you can do it however if that does happen what you can do is just realign your stencil back on the top and you could use your reference guide to reference these corner points so it's perfect it's going to lay on there and then you can reposition and respray that little section so that's our mark away space. I do actually love that one. And I've had this tin for ages, and obviously I do demo it a lot. And there's still loads in there, so it does last It lasts a really, really good time. Awesome. And do you know what? When you're trying to do a job, and you think, you see, look at that, and you think, 7 99 Should I get it? Should I not get it? You'll get it. It'll make everything easier. Next time you try and do a job that you should have got the spray for, you'd give £17.99 to have it there. And then it's one of those things, isn't it? Because they are absolutely invaluable tools. If you want that one, £7.99, uh, get yourself over to the website, craftscompanion.co.uk. Uh, you can uh, see everything that's coming up on the show by hitting that Shop the Show button. Lots of you chatting away. Uh, Joe says, oh, you're keeping us in stitches already this morning, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only kind of stitching I can do, Fred, I'm afraid. <laughs> I like it. I like... Oh, we like... We like. Has anyone else got any sewn jokes? We like... Liam had one. Oh. Liam had one on Sunday, and I can't uh, remember what it was now. Wasn't there that the government used last year that everyone was laughing about? A stitch in time saves nine, was it? Do you remember that one? I do, yes. I think yeah. I remember him what saying that one. Saying. Yes. <laughs> or was it a stitch in time saves lives? No, I think it was saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Nine lives, yeah. maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. We'll think of some better <laughs> ones. <laughs> see if we think, we'll see if we can That wasn't mine. One. That was Michael Ghost, by the way, not mine. So <laughs> we'll not, that's not my kind of banter. Just so you know. <laughs> we'll uh, have right, to think of one. What are we looking at next then, Bernie? So we're going to use the paper pattern spray. Now, this is another one, and oh, I always have favourites. Um, stick and spray is my favourite ever crafter's companion product. But this one here is very, this has got to be in my top ten paper pattern spray so what I've done is I've just got my little ironing board out here and a piece of fabric just so I can demonstrate what this one does and what it actually does is it's this is a another adhesive in a can in a spray form but what it does is it reacts with heat so if I show you if I grab just a piece of paper so I've got a piece of paper here and I'm just going to spray quick shake I'm just going to give it and you only need to give it a light mist you don't need a lot so light mist on there. And we just need to let that dry a little bit. I think, does it say on the can how many seconds? I don't think it says, but it's only about 10, 10 15 seconds. Perfect. Just let it dry. Now, when I feel that, because it's a little bit wet, I can feel a little bit of tackiness, but not a lot. So I'm going to put it on my fabric. And now you're going to say, Bernie, you said that would stick. And it doesn't. But wait till I put the iron on it. Where's ah. my iron? So what it does is the heat activates the glue. And then once you've ironed it on, and I've got this on a hot iron. I have hot for everything, to be fair. I've got this on a hot iron. Pop that there. I'm going to lift that up now, and that is not coming off. 
So if you've, you've got paper patterns at home, or you've made, you're making some applique shapes and you've got them cut out of paper, this is brilliant because you don't need to pop your pins in. And if you haven't got glass head pins, you've got plastic pins, your iron's going to heat it. If you're cutting patterns out as well, pins can sometimes distort it. Or you can catch your hand and um, prick your finger a little bit and draw blood. So, and then you get that on your fabric. You don't want blood oh, on no, your fabric. You don't want to get your fabric dirty. No. Don't worry, not, if it's not injuring yourself or, you know, the possibility <laughs> of needing a tetanus shot, that's not the issue. Exactly. It's the fabric that's the problem, isn't it, Bernie? Exactly. So you've got your paper patterns bit and then watch this. It peels off. So it's like, you know, them little... Um, yellow notes that you get that just peel off oh yeah little sticky notes yeah it's just gone like oh, that awesome. and there's no residue on there at all so that now that that you can feel something's there but nothing there so i'm going to put it back on again it's now cold i'm going to do it again i haven't sprayed i'm going to do it again so would you use this one in conjunction if you had like an inch cut pattern that you wanted or something you wanted to like cut out of fabric like a, let's say like a scrolly detail or something would you use the the last spray that you used in conjunction with like this one so you'd stick it stick an intricate design down and then could you spray the other one over the top of it to mark yes. around where you were going to cut perfect idea absolutely Brilliant. perfect yeah so i've peeled that off again i'm going to iron it again now I've tested this a number of times and um, I've done, well, I'll be honest and tell you how many I did, 12 before okay. I had to put any more spray on because it just keeps reapplying itself. I didn't hold it up. I missed the holding up bit. So this is the fourth time now. And if I hold it up again, you can see that is not falling off. It's awesome. staying on there. So the other use with this is if you've got any, um, tissue patterns so i've got these here so this is tissue so if any anyone's done any dressmaking patterns before they would know they would recognize this um this sort of thing tissue paper this tears really easily once you start putting your pins in here you're going to tear your pattern it's going to tear now these pieces here you think right well if i use that and then i fold all them back up they're going to stick together Trust me that these were the ones that I demoed. I looked back five months ago. These have had the spray on. They've been sat, folded up. They've not stuck together. Awesome. It's still there, but it's still on there. So after five months. Oh, wow. It still works. Look, it's stuck on. How fabulous. Brilliant, isn't it? I love it. It's really good. And if anyone is doing, um, look at that. It's quite, um, it's better than peeling a plaster off. <laughs> it's more satisfying than that. Look, I it just comes off and it'll just reactivate and reactivate. Now, if anyone's done foundation paper piecing before and you have to glue the fabric to your um, paper, I should have brought an example of next next not next week the week after me i'll bring an example of it in or i'll post something actually i'll post it in the somerth crafters companion later because i did a quilt in lo the first lockdown and um, if anyone saw it the mustard and blue one with the old botanicals fabric and i used i'll bring in the pieces of paper that i used to make that and you i'll bring the quilt in you won't believe it i use this spray absolutely lo love it absolutely love it so yeah so that's that one and then we've got a couple of other ones that we've got on the show we've got this one now i know we'll have seen this one quite a lot so we've got the stick and stay so what this one is is this is a permanent adhesive so again for your um applique work is brilliant if you're doing a it's temporary until you iron it so again it's heat activated but it's sticky before then so if i just put these two oh hang on i cut oh I just got some little scraps. So I just cut some little triangles out. And again, what you're going to do on here is just spray them. Now, what I tend to do, I'll quickly show you this one. Because I've, when I start spraying, that's going to waft away because it's a little piece of fabric. So what I do is put it on my ironing board, put a little pin in. Watch this, Joe, you'll be impressed. That's, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't shoot awesome. across the table. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so just pop a little pin in. And then you're going to put it on and then what you're going to do then is put your iron on it and it takes i won't do it for the full thing but it tells you on the tin i think it's up to 45 seconds you need to um 
heat, to have that heat on there, and then that becomes permanent. You don't have to stitch it, and then it can go in the wash up oh, to 40 fabulous. degrees. A lot of so people are loving these. Uh, Karen says she needs that little iron. Excellent a demonstration, says Katie Henderson. Patty says, I have those type of patterns and they are a nightmare. Game changer is the pattern spray as well, says Christine. So a lot of love for all of these, uh, Bernie. And this, this last one I'm going to show you is the fabric shield. And all this is, is, so you know, I always say, you know when you bought a sofa years ago, a, a, a cloth sofa, and they would say, do you want to buy that special spray that oh, protects it? Oh, I know the one. So you I don't had to get pay £250 for my sofa to have a special coating on it. The, the one how that I how much is this a tin? <laughs> Sorry? How much is this a tin? £6.99. And you paid £250. £249.95 precisely. Uh, and it was called Fabric Guard. £249.95 precisely. And it was called Fabric Guard, I think, or something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. It's this. Oh. It's this stuff. How many tins do you think I'd have needed for my three well, feet sofa? The, I've had this one a while and I use it quite a bit. I mean, I've got a little bag. So if you've got like a little bag and it's not going to go in the wash a lot, you just give it a bit of a mist. You just, I mean, you just give it a little mist like that. You know, if you're doing on cushions and things like Bags and cushions are my main ones. But I see your cushions at home, your curtains, you know, if you've got like curtains near a door, when you're in and out the door, you know, you, it, it, they can get caught. You know, this is a fabric shield and that is what it's doing. It's shielding your fabric. So that's the other one. So, so yeah, so hopefully my little um, mini mini, what would you say, mini spray masterclass, masterclass, <laughs> that's my accent. That hopefully that's sort I of could have bought 35 cans for 250 pounds <laughs> <laughs> i'd somehow I don't think it's going to take uh 35 cans to do a sofa <laughs> uh, what sort of fabric can and can't we use it on so could we use it on things like velvets and um things that have got a bit of a pile to them or is it going to sort of make them go a bit sticky so what i would say is if you're going to do it, it Cotton, it's brilliant on. Upholstery fabric, it's great on. Any other fabric, just do a little tester. Do a little tester on it. Yep. But for the majority of, um, for what we sort of make, upholstery, I use upholstery fabric for make bags with. It's perfect, absolutely perfect. So yes, yeah, so just do a little tester on it. But I think we'd better move on, Joe, and not talk about yep. that spray anymore. Uh, <laughs> it's very busy. It's resetting the cat amongst the pigeons. Our US users get a little bit upset, so maybe we need to move on. Oh, yeah. uh, Sonia Sorry. says, uh, Bernie, you and I have exactly uh, the same iron as well. Um, uh, brilliant explanations. Lots of love for them. Um, first time watching the channel, says Julie Jones. Hi, Julie Jones. Where are you watching us from? I'd love to know. How did you find us? Uh, Fran is saying good morning from Marilyn. Bernie is very talented. She is indeed. Uh, and Katie Henderson. Thank you, Bernie. That was brilliant. Uh, lots of people love that. Right, I want to recap the deal on those uh, quilting uh, quilting border guides uh, that we talked about a little earlier. You've got the four different shapes that you need right there. So you've got a uh, geometric wave, you've also got the decorative panel, the jewel and the heart, and you're gonna get the gloves. Uh, Bernie will explain why we need those gloves, but if you do wanna do a little bit of French mime, a bit of Michael Jackson tribute, something like that, uh, you can use them for that, of course, as well, if you want to. Um, 43.20 or 62.40 uh, in the UK. Uh, platinum members, uh, as a platinum member, and that's if you want all of it. There is a multi-buy for you as well. It means that if you go for any two of them, 28 pounds or 40 dollars, uh, you're saving over 20%, however you go for them, even on the individuals. Uh, it's only the second time uh, that you've seen these on Crafters TV, so it is understandably very, very busy. And there's a lot of other things, there's a lot of interest in that a lot of you have popped in your basket uh, that are much further down the show. So what I want to do is give you a bit of a heads up of some of the busier items uh, right here. The builder block, firstly, uh, I know that Bernie's going to be using this in next demonstration. Uh, this is awesome because you get full instructions. It's all about you creating all the different shapes in four inch, six <coughs> inch, eight inch, nine inch and 12 inch uh, squares in here. You've got your different shapes in here as well. So you've got your rectangles, uh, you've also got your isos isosceles triangle, all got there in the end, uh, your half rectangle triangle, and a 52 page instruction booklet. So much inspiration online for you with that as well. Always very busy. There is also a builder block uh, expansion pack available for you in a few different options. So I'll share that with you. So the next one is your half square triangles, is the first one that you've got. 
Here we go. This one's a square, so as you can see, a 26.99 or 40 or 45. Uh, you've also got the half square triangles as well, which is this option just here. Again, 26.99 or 40 45s. Or you've got the quarter square triangles as well, which is this option just here, which everyone you're going for, they are absolutely awesome. We've got the Builder Banner for you on the show as well. Now, if you want to do beautiful personalised bunting, uh, door hangings, uh, little sort of wall, wall hangings look awesome with these as well. Uh, it's a 31 piece collection, 24.99 or 34.95 if you want to get hold of that. Now we've got fabric on the show for you. However, you're going to need to be quick for it because the so lovely uh, six piece fat quarter bundle is limited stock already, 12.99 or 24.95. We don't even have it, I don't think, in the studio uh, because it is that low in stock. We've also got a four piece fat quarter collection for you which is from our Enchanted Forest collection, 11 99 or 14 95 if you'd like to get that one. Uh, and we've also got for you the binding collection. Now what you're going to get in here is you're going to get quilting clips, you're going to get uh, the binding tool uh, as well, and you're also getting in this, you're getting the quilting clips, you're getting the binding tool, and you're getting the heat erasable markers in there as well. Are you getting the <coughs> mat that it's all on? That is the burning question. You are not, no. Uh, so it's just the quilting clips that are on the, the pictured on the mat there. You don't get the mat included. £30 or $42 <coughs> if you want to get a hold of those ones. Right, it is time for the demonstrations. If you, any of you guys have got any sewing projects that you, um, if you've been working on, I'd love to see pictures of them. Studio at craftscompanion.co.uk. Um, also, I know a lot of you that watch this show don't actually sew. Uh, so if you are watching the show and you're not a sewer, if you did start sewing, I'd like to know what would be the one thing that you would love to sew the most. Uh, you can let me know about that over on Crafters TV on Facebook or Crafters Companion across on YouTube. Um, Karen says, uh, Bernie, any tips for using how to use the border guides with a regular old sewing machine? I don't really know what a regular old sewing machine is, Bernie, but I'm sure you may. So you would need to make sure with that you've got a ruler foot. So you need to have the ruler foot for it to fit. Now, very old sewing machines may not actually um, work with the ruler feet. I mean, the ones that we sell are quite universal. We sell the low shank and the high shank. What you could do is if your manufacturer is still going, so say it might be a Singer one, because I know a lot of people have old Singer machines, if you contact them, they'll be able to let you know whether you can get a ruler foot. So as long as you've got a ruler foot, then you can use the guides 100%. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I hope that helps. If you want to go for the uh, feet, the feet as well, we've got both on the show. We've got the high shank and the low shank are the options. So there's a high shank option and a low shank option. I'm right in saying, Bernie, most um, domestic machines are the low shank, aren't they? Unless you've got like a, a huge thing, like a, a Brother V7 or something like that, you might need a, a higher shank one. Yeah, the majority of machines that we, that we use, that we have domestic ones, will be a low shank. Um, but I see you can again contact your manufacturer. Um, if you are totally unsure as well, if you contact customer services and then they'll come back to me and then I'll come back and help you find out whether your machine is is a low or a high shank or a specialist one because some makes i've got a machine at home that doesn't it has its own specialist ruler foot um but i was a bit cheeky when i bought the machine and asked if they threw it throw it in for free for me because i do right. a lot of ruler work and they did <laughs> so wow. you have to just shy be birds getting like, out as my mum says be cheeky like our bernie then <laughs> any other questions you've got keep getting them into me uh over on crafters tv or across of course uh, on facebook or across on youtube uh right it's demonstration time what would you like to guide us through next bernie so we're going to do the builder block plus so this is this, this was the second set that we brought out. We had the Builder Block Original first, and then the Builder Block Plus. And again, this is a standalone set, or you can use it with your Builder Blocks as well, which I'm going to show you when I move on to Builder Block Expansion Packs later. So I'm just going to show you some examples. This has got to be my favourite sample in the whole of the box when I opened this up. Look at that. How beautiful is that? It's really awesome. Absolutely isn't it? gorgeous, isn't it? Now, again, it depends on your colours that you use as well, of what sort of effect you're going to have. But this one is just using the half rectangle triangle, HRT for short, which is what I call it, because <laughs> it's a mouthful to say it. But all that is, it's the same shape, just cut out in a number of colours. If I show you another one where we've used the half rectangle, so this little um, 
this little makeup bag, this little zipper pouch that we put the fabric shield on. This one's been made up of the small half rectangle triangles, but also of the rectangles. So this set has rectangles in as well, and your isosceles triangles. So if I get Why the box... Why is it called an isosceles? It's a very hard thing to spell and read, isn't it? So it's, it's isos isosceles is two sides of an equal length, and then the, bottoms, the bottom edge is different. So if you've got an equilateral, they're all, oh, all the so same it's length. It's a triangle with a skinny bottom. Um, it can be either. Or it, it can have a, have a wide bottom. It can have a wide bottom or a skinny or bottom. Or a skinny bottom. Yeah. If I Everything was an isosceles goes. triangle, I'd be a wide bottom isosceles <laughs> triangle, Bernie, I can I'm assure you. I'm definitely a wide bottom isosceles. That. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> but what you get in this set is you're getting this lovely, and I've got it the right way or I have, yes. You're getting this lovely storage system. And this is really good because if you're like me and have quite a lot of dyes, they do get a bit jumbled sometimes. To have a storage system like this, you're going to keep them all in place. You're not going to lose them as well. So you've got these gorgeous drawers that come out totally as well. So you can take, if you haven't got a lot of space in your work area, obviously you can take them, um, take the tree out and just take out the ones you're going to use. And then what you've got here is you've got this, what we call a road map. Now in here are all the sizes that you're going to have in that shape. So they're all your rectangles. And if I take that out, there they all are lovingly in there. It reminds me of the, no, is it the Colosseum? The, the, I can't think of the word, auditorium thing. You know what? what I mean? You know, like in Greece, where they have the auditorium where all the seats are on the outside? The Panthenon. No, it's not called the Panthenon, is it? I can't think. It's, no, it's, it's the thing on the hill. I don't know, but it's, it looks like that anyway. It's like a little seat and area. <laughs> Let us know. You're telling you my mind. <laughs> yeah, let us know. You know how my mind works. So, but they're not going to fall out. So if I if I tip up, they're not going to fall out because there's little lips in there to hold them in. And then, like I say, you're getting your road map that has all your sides on. So I'm now going to pop that out the way and just show you the actual booklet that you get. So, like you were saying, Joe, you're getting full instructions in here. And they're in four different languages as well. And it's telling you lots of tips. So always cut multiple layers of fabric up to six layers of 100% cotton. If you've got thicker fabric or thinner fabric, you can cut more or less layers. And it mentions about your quarter inch seams. It gives you cutting tips and how to place your fabric on uh, your dye on the fabric. And then it goes into the patterns. So in here we've given you a number of patterns and for each one, I call it, you get a little recipe. So for this one here is point to point and it's saying for a 12 inch block, you'll cut 16, six and a half by three and a half, half rectangle triangles. That's it. So you're going to cut them out and then put them together. And that's the block that was used in that, um, I was like autumnal colours, wasn't it? That table runner. So it's always giving you what, what you need to cut and we hold your hand on these. And then you can go online and the, the link is in the booklet here. So it's crafterscompanion.co.uk forward slash builder block. Awesome. So you can go or .co or .com in the US forward slash builder block. If you go there, you will see a lot more patterns. Also on our blog as well, we've got tutorials and we've got a lot of um, help on there as well. Even more help videos. We've got, we have loads, we have loads. Um, Christine Yeats says amphitheatre, is that what you meant? Amphitheatre, thank you Christine, that's Thanks, it. Thanks Christine, she's See. always got our backs Christine. Christine's good, thank you Christine, you saved me bacon there. <laughs> I'm going to actually do, I'm going to do a ninja star. I nearly I did like a ninja, I nearly did a ninja impression there, but oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I you are going to, before the show's out, I can sense it. I can sense it. <laughs> so it's telling me I need half rectangle triangles and I need isosceles triangles. So I'm going to go to my tray. So I think I'm back on the tray here and I can pull these out of here. So, oh, you can't see them. There we go. So you can see there. So they're my bottom two. So I'm going to pull those out and then I know that I'm going to get my sides out. And like I say, you can then put everything back tidily, but I'm just making a mess. Hang on, let me get rid of these. Make a bit of space, Bernie. Make a bit of space. You can't see what I'm doing. There we go. And these look great if you've got any of our other builder blocks as well and you've got them on your shelves behind you and they all line up and they all really neat. And it makes people think that we're really organised, but... 
but you know. <laughs> right now, the fabric I'm going to use as well is our Enchanted Forest. So we've got the Fat Quarter Pack on the show. That is so let me show. grab. Still in stock. Good stocks on that one as well. The other it's one is lovely. very low though. Eleven ninety nine or fourteen ninety five. The other one that was uh, very low was the So Lovely one. So uh, make sure you grab. Uh, if you've got the So Lovely one in your basket, probably check that out because it is going to go at any moment now. Uh, do you know why I think that might be going as well, Joe? Because when I was on with Craig this morning, we were using that So Lovely fabric. So I'm wondering if everyone sort of seen and thought, oh, I'll I'll have myself some of that. <laughs> So it is really lovely fabric. Right, so I've got my fabric ready to cut. So in this one, I've, I mean, you get a fat quarter of each in the pack. This is the um, Forest Florals. And then I've got this one, which is the Ditsy Dashers, which I love, absolutely love them. And it's 100% cotton, washes beautifully, irons beautifully. It's a joy actually to, to work with. And I never thought I'd be a snob, Joe, until I got more heavily into sewing. And I became a very big snob of fabric, which is really. You're a fabric snob now. Yeah, I okay, am. And this, and this meets those exacting, uh, those exacting uh, requirements. This this fabric. Yeah, yeah I'm a That's fabric snob. I like to have nice fabric. Now, am I going to get these both on here? Oh, do you know? I think I might. I might, Joe. I might. Right. So let me get my. Now, I've got oh, my little layer uh, embroidery scissors just to get them oh, out of the box. Uh, whilst you're lining those up, uh, Karen says, I've inherited three different sewing machines, one better than the next, but I have no idea which is the best. Is it possible to ask Bernie for help on her page? So yeah, or if you put a comment in the Sewing with Crafters Companion, and then you might get some help from other people as well if they've already got that machine, but I will go on and check your post as well. So if you pop it in Sewing with Crafters Companion, We'll be able to give you a hand in there. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, lots of people talking on YouTube about how they start, how they learn to sew. Uh, Mary Pat says, I learned on our family machine. Neither of my parents were seamstresses and I wanted to learn, so they bought a machine for everyone to use. As the oldest, I broke it in at age nine. That's cute, isn't it? Uh, Randy as well says, uh, I learned on my grandmother's Singer treadle machine. Ooh. 17 below zero here today. Randy, where on earth are you? Uh, and Molly says, my mum didn't sew, but I was hand sewing since seven. My dad gave in and bought me a machine. He said later he thought it would be a phase. Here I am, 40 plus years later. <gasps> Love that. Let me oh, know that's... how you learned to sew. How did you learn, Bernie? So my mum taught me. Right. So my mum taught me when I was little. Um, and my sister. And she used to um, ice cake, make cakes and ice cakes. So... Um, like wedding cakes, birthday cakes. But in those days, it was a royal icing, and there was no ready royal icing and then. Icing. Again, I'm laughing at my own words. Icing. Mm. Um, so now, I do the sewing, and my sister bakes cakes. Oh, and fabulous. does cakes, yeah. Yeah, so... So you give her lovely sewed projects, and she, you exchange that for gorgeous ex cakes? Exchange for cake, yeah. So my mum doesn't Perfect. need to do any of it now, because me and my sister, me and my sister do it all. <laughs> Match made in heaven, I'd say. Cake and beautiful soft furnishings. Exactly. What more do you need? What exactly. More do you need? Right, so I'm going to get my ninja star back out. And this is where you're going to start playing. So once you've got your pieces cut out, you're going to follow the design from the book and lay them out. Now, the good thing is, and this was the one thing um, that... I showed Craig this morning was that once you've laid your pattern out it doesn't have to stay like that you can swap and change at your own um, sort of however you however you want it and make different designs awesome so I so see all I'm doing is following that pattern in the book and it is a bit like a jigsaw. I had Craig really concentrating this morning. Um, I vowed to get him um, sewn next time, Joe. What do you reckon? Like you've sewn before with me, haven't you? Once, you made a little, yeah. Once. You made a little... Was it a bag or it, a cushion? It was all right. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was... Do you know what, Birdie? In all honesty, it was one of my New Year's resolutions for last year. At learning really? Really? Yeah, Ooh. but oh gosh, last year so much happened, didn't it? I know it did. <laughs> you know, so I feel like I've sort of let myself off a li the hook a little bit. Well, actually, someone in the office as well, um, who used to work heavily with soft crafts, mm. um, Sunny, you'll know Sunny. Yeah, yeah. You'll know Sunny. Um, I'd said that I would teach her to sew, and I put a reminder in my um, 
calendar on my phone and it came up over Christmas and I said to her, I said, ah, my reminders come up to, for you to learn how to sew. Oh, no, no, too busy. <laughs> too much has happened now. We're not exactly like you saying, everything else yeah. is, comes in well, the I way. Well, I mean, there's, there, there is that, isn't there? And then also there's the other element is that we haven't been able to be face to face with people outside of our households for a lot of the year. So it's quite hard to go to a private sewing uh, lesson. I also wanted to learn the piano as well, but we'll, we'll get them, we'll pick them up this year once everything gets back to normal, Bernie. Exactly. Me, you, I'll bring the wine and maybe something delicious. And I'll and, bring uh, the machine. give me a little lesson on the sewing machine. Yeah. How does that sound? Fab. Fabulous. Right, I'm Love gonna it. show you how to just sew a couple of these together. So what you're gonna do, if I put that there, you're gonna see that a little bit of that end is cut off. So what that does is it's cut off on the triangle, the other triangle as well, and that helps you, it's twofold this, it helps you line it up, and what it also does is saves you fabric and time, well three things really, because it cuts the little dog ears off. So I'm just sewing a quarter inch seam. There we go. I'll go Bernie speed. And then what you're going to do is press that out. So when you press it, I always give it a bit of a finger press first. And if it looks okay at that point, you can sew the next piece on. If it still looks a bit lumpy, give it a little press with your iron. And then I'm going to put the other piece on and quickly sew down the side there. And then I've got one that I've stitched the four together to make the block. And then what you do is make up your blocks to whatever size you want. I mean, you can make from sizes um, up to 12 inches with, oh, the, with this system. It's really versatile. And to say it works with all of our other block, builder blocks in the series because they're all the same sizes as well. So then, if I that back now we can see we've got that perfect block beautiful pop that back into place and then if i pop these out the way in true blue peter style <gasps> in true tv style here here's you go. one i made it yeah i love there that. we go so that is the that's the ninja star so if i put in from the boot you can see this one here it's telling me how i piece it so I'm, this is where i made my little block here so i did that first make four of them and then pop the four together and then you've got the block. So you can put a board around there, um, or it can make two of them make a bag, make different blocks. Now, there was, oh, I can't remember the lady's name. There was a lady um, made some blocks, I think it was from the alphabet set, um, and she's made two and then made them into a bag as well. So it doesn't have to be a big quilt, because sometimes that does put people off, doesn't it, Joe? People think if they're going to do quilting, it's going to be a big quilt, and it mm. doesn't have to be. No, absolutely not. Can start with a smaller project. Absolutely. Uh, Rosalind uh, was saying, my mum taught me before I was 10, of all of the adult women in my family had a sewing machine in that home. I always thought every home had a sewing machine in them. That's all I knew. Uh, Katie Henderson, a great question from Katie Henderson. I'll come to that in a moment, Katie. Uh, Tina says, I'm 42 and I'm only just learning to sew with a sewing machine. I am self-taught YouTube. I had a daily date, says uh, Sonia. Just quickly, I'm going to run through the Builder Block expansion. Why might we need these? Um, Bernie in our uh, in our sort of soft crafting crafty arsenal so these are your this is the initial the original set that we brought out had these shapes in them which is your squares your half square I won't say rectangle half square triangle and quarter square triangles they're the most popular blocks in patchwork that I would say if you look for patterns online say for quarter square triangle patterns you'll find that thousands hundreds of thousands there's so many and you'll see them in a lot of um, blocks so what you can do here is if you didn't want that full system I know we haven't got it in stock at the moment the, the first system that we brought out you can buy these separately if you want those shapes you can still get them or if you've already got the original system you can buy these as well and then you can double cut so if you think about your time saving you're cutting six to eight layers at a time if you've got two of the same shape, you're going to pop them on your big Gemini and you're going to be flying through. And to be fair, these, all of those expansion packs will fit through your junior as well. So if you've got a junior, they will fit through your junior. Oh, awesome. That's always good to know. Uh, so, yeah, so you, so you could kind of go with them with the building block, with the builder block. Uh, but they could be a standalone option if you wanted to use them that way then, uh, Bernie, would you say? 100% yeah. standalone. Yeah, perfect. But the uh, lovely add on if you've got the original one as well. So, I mean, I'm lucky to have both, um, and I will have 
the two going at the same time because I want the cutting done as quick as I can as we know they're going to be accurate and then I can get to sewing because that's the bit that we oh, all enjoy that's the best that's the bit you love that's isn't the fun it? bit yes it's like it's like paper crafting really it's not the cutting out that's the fun it's the composition it's the putting it together it's the you know sticking it down and putting all the fancy bits on let me run you through the options we've got on that expansion back the expansion pack uh, so what you've got here is the squares as you can see 26.99 or 40.45 uh, you've got the different sizes in there so you've got uh, one two two and a half three and a half and four and a half inch squares you've then got this one here which is your triangles uh, and in the triangles you've got one and a half two two and a half three and a half and four and a half as well uh, and also then you've got this one just here this one is the um Oh, the half square. This one's a half square. The one I just showed you, that was a quarter square. That one's a quarter square. That one's a half square. Absolutely, same sizing as well. All working exactly uh, the same way. 26.99 or 40.45 if you want to go onto those. Now, build a banner. Awesome. We love this. Uh, there's lots you can do with it. 24.99 or 34. 95. It's awesome for personalization, for banners. It's fantastic for, I'm seeing this for things like buntings, uh, wall hangings, uh, personalized cushions, so many different things. I know that uh, Bernie's got a fabulous bunting demonstration. She's going to show us uh, with this in a few moments time. Um, now, I want to share with you firstly though, before we get to that, some of the other awesome products that are in this show, the embroidery kit. Now this is fantastic. I saw uh, an artist online, Bernie, and they were painting, right? And then they were using embroidery to accent their painting and add texture. It was such a gorgeous thing to do. I'll try and find some pictures of it. Uh, this is your four piece uh, embroidery kit, Craft Fault Collection. Everything you need in here. So if you are looking to get into embroidery, try it for the first time. These kits are an excellent starting point and it's great that you can get uh, all four of them for that fabulous price of £30 or $40. We also have some wooden embroidery hoop sets on the show for you as well. $9.99 or $14.95. Uh, these are fantastic if you, uh, well, for a whole host uh, of projects. And also a lot of people using these for um, home decor, even if you're not using them uh, for embroidery. You've also then got your embroidery fled. Fled? That's a, that's a combination of floss and thread. <laughs> so thread if you're in the UK, uh, floss if you are in the US. Uh, we've got some different ones for you. We've got the essentials. We have got the brights, vintage, aka vintage. And we've got the pastels for you as well. Um, oh, and we've got festive ones too. Uh, stock up, well, they're festive, lovely colors in there. Uh, and some soft tones as well. Uh, these are an option or oh, rich tones 7.99 and 10.95 uh, they are all over on the website for you uh, as well the lady in question karen ebling 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 has posted in the um posted the bag in the sewing group uh, apparently um so you know uh, you can go and um give us some advice bernie if that's all right brilliant um, couple i will of have a look later on a couple today. of questions for you katie henderson wants to know what a fat quarter is so, a fat quarter, oh, where's my fat quarter bundle gone? I shall hold one up and show you. So, when you buy a metre of fabric, they'll cut a metre off the bolt, so it'll be a metre by about 110 centimetres. And then what you can do then is, what happens is, you can buy then, buy the fat quarter, is that metre cut into four. So, if I hold one up, there we go. So you can see there that that's four of those will make your meterage. If you went in um, a shop and they'll, some shops will sell less than half a meter, some won't. If you ask for a fat quarter, they won't necessarily give you a fat quarter. They get you, give you a long quarter, which is off the ball to fabric, um, a quarter of a meter off a their strip. So you get a long strip. So what um, some genius person did years ago was introduce the fat quarter because you've got that big square of fabric that you can do more with that you don't join so if you are doing cushions or um bags and you or you want bigger squares you've got that bigger piece to work with rather than the thin strip so that's that's the fat quarter and then obviously the good thing as well is if there's a range of fabric and you want um some of each of that fabric but you can't maybe stretch to half a meter of each because that's what you buy off the board 
you buy the fat quarter pack you're going to get one of each design in there like with these ones and the so lovely ones if there's any left because i'm using them in my next demo um you're going to get one of every range so you're getting a taster of it as well so it's a it's a really good it's a really good set to have and you can make a lot with it it goes quite a long way as well joe fantastic uh really really awesome uh so i hope that I should answers your question uh, and julie who else was it uh, karen said uh, should you use steam uh, when you're pressing seams so when you press when you um, initially pressing press with no steam so i rarely rarely have any water in my iron i'll always use a dry iron but sometimes if you've got um a stubborn block so if it's gone a little bit you know awry and you want just to ease it back over to get it back in place what you can do then is once you've pressed it then apply the steam and it'll fix it in place so that's that's the only time i use steam apart from my always iron sorry i should always iron my fabric first i'm gonna lie <laughs> because i don't always should always iron your fabric first you can iron it with steam to get your creases out before you start cutting into it but then once you're doing your seams um dry iron definitely a dry iron Fabulous. You got any more questions? Uh, then you can get them into me over on Crafts TV on Facebook in the live feed there, or across <laughs> on YouTube as well. Now, uh, I did see some fabulous bunting you were holding up a minute ago, uh, Bernie. Is that what you'd like to demonstrate next? I am. Look at this. Let me unravel it. So this is that gorgeous, so lovely fabric, and I've got one more to put on the end. Now, can you see what I? You won't know what I've used for the ribbon jaw. The What's ribbon that? that's wrapped around the pack of fat quarters when it comes to oh, you. Talk about talk recycling. About oh yeah. <laughs> that sounds better than being stingy. <laughs> frugal, yeah. Go, go frugal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I love doing that. Obviously, you can just turn the ends over so they don't so they don't fray. But absolutely brilliant. So right, so I've got one more to add on here, so I'm gonna show you how how I actually do it. So we've got our builder banner this is a really really great product what you're getting is different size bottoms if you like that you can add to each one so i've just gone random on mine um and i've done different ones so i'm gonna oh i'm not sure i might do the round one on this one so what you get in the pack you get your set of dies and you get the rectangle and that's going to make your base piece and then after you've cut your rectangle out, you're then going to choose which bottom you want. So say I'm going to have like this one here. You then go through your die cut machine again and cut the, cut the bottom. So let me show you how to do that in awesome. action. Uh, we've had a viewer. First, we love it when we, we get to uh, tick off new countries on our list. Oh, yes. Uh, Bernie. Crew, it says greetings from Thailand. I'm wow. pretty sure this is the first time I've ever had a viewer from Thailand. Crew, I need to know where in Thailand uh, you are. I'd love to know, uh, yeah, whereabouts in Thailand you are. Do let me know. Yeah, How what exciting. time? So we had Malaysia, we've had Singapore, uh, and now we've got crew. Also, yeah, what is the time, crew? I'm going to say, what's the time here? Two o'clock. I think it's about 9 p.m. in Thailand. But uh, crew, let us know. What well, it's a very English thing, isn't it? You always want to know what the weather's like and what the time is. <laughs> yeah. What, what time is it there? What time is it was there? It, is, it, is it just not before? Yes, I was bang on. Apparently, five to nine. Uh, yeah, I've been. I've, I've been. I've travelled that way east a lot more than I've travelled uh, west. So I've kind of got. A, I've a not travelled over that way. I've not travelled that way. So as you can see here, Joe, I'm just taping this down because I've been very frugal. Frugal? <laughs> With my fabric. Why so, do you sound funny when you say it? I know. It's my funny accent, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So it's like when me, I don't know if I said this the other week, when my mum my mum will ring me, she'll be ring me later with a shopping list for the shopping delivery. And she sings she sings the she shopping sings list. The shopping list. <laughs> yeah. Four pints of milk, <laughs> cat food. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her. She can't watch, she doesn't watch, um, she doesn't do social media. Right. Um, oh, I've put my plates a bit wonky there. Let's just straighten it up. Um, she doesn't do, no, she can, she can work the telly now and she can get Netflix on. Right. But she can't work it for YouTube or anything like oh, that. So, I think we well, should so, teach her about it. I reckon I know. She, can, she can do Netflix, she can do YouTube, I reckon. Well, I'd said that to her. So if you've got Netflix, because she's been getting a new telly, so it'll have it on. But she does watch us when I'm on uh, but Creating if you get her, So what you want to do is get her, get her logged on on the TV and get her, get her to follow 
uh, Crafts Companion. Yes. And then all she'll have to do is move along, select the icon, YouTube. When we're live, it'll be the first thing that comes up, so then she'll just have to click on it. It'll be always be there immediately. If she doesn't follow anyone else and we're live, it'll always come it'll up. It'll always come up, won't it? Oh, yeah. good tip, Joe. Thank you for that. Right, talking of tips, I've got a top tip. So, when we're going to do the bottoms on these, we're going to be sewing two together. So if you put your fabric right sides together, once you cut it, it's ready then to take straight to the sewing machine. If, and the reason why I would say to do this is because once you put that bottom on, if you wiggle a little bit and it goes a little bit off, I don't know, I'll exaggerate it so you can see what I mean. If it goes a little bit off like that, then, oh, it's straightened up. <laughs> It's straightened up itself. They have exaggerated that. If it goes off a little bit, it's going to be, when you put them together, it's not going to fit. But if you placed your pieces on there, it is going to work. So I'm going to do two different ones. So I'll do that one, and then I'll do a pointy one. If I can pick my die up. Ah, crew says, uh, yes, 9 p.m. Central Northern part of Thailand. <gasps> I wonder if that's anywhere near Chiang Mai. I've been to Chiang Mai, spent a lot of time there, crew. Oh, uh, and went around the border, uh, all the way up around uh, into the hills in the, near the border with Myanmar. <gasps> I'd love it. Maybe next time, because Chiang Mai is one of my favourite, probably actually maybe even my favourite city in the world after Manchester. Maybe I could. Maybe we could have a little. Uh, we could do, do a little craft along with crew. How does that sound in Thailand? Oh I yeah. I reckon we get the company to pay for us to go there. I was thinking nine o'clock on the morning, pro meant, but nine o'clock at night. Nine o'clock at night, yeah. So, oh. yeah, um, I've not. I've never been over that way. So, I've, I've, can you see? I've put extra tape on these because I don't want them to move. So I have put the extra tape on. And again, I've got my. No, I haven't. Um, to give you my sandwich. So I've got my clear plate. Then I've got my metal shim then my fabric then my die so you've got metal into metal like a pair of scissors it's a good way to remember it and then the plastic shim and then your clear plate on the top awesome i'm just having a little look uh where i'm loving all these questions it's absolutely fantastic it is, isn't i love it? getting questions uh i'm just having a little look where um where crew lives we're looking her up uh right sonia says i love that bernie i love that bernie i also use the strip that that way oh. uh, the wrap the fat quarter with i mean it's it's too good to toss i will use the strips uh and where a loop is needed on an upcycled upcycled project always use the ties for that great way of using them absolutely is any other questions that you've got uh then get them in julie did say can you please explain how these go through the gemini please i think she was talking about the builder block i'm guessing they go through the gemini in exactly the so same exactly way that the same, the, yeah. These ones do. Um, I did forget to give uh, give my plate combination. So what happened there is where I just posi hadn't positioned that quite on. I'll show you again on this one. I just oh no, that one's gone straight over. So I just had a little bit of a thread. So I used my embroidery scissors. So I've got them handy and just chopped, just or snipped it rather than chopped it. Right. So. Now, you're going to now stitch around these, but leave the top section open. So, which one would you like, Joe? The pointy one or the rounded one? I like the pointy one. The pointy one, right. The pointy one it is. So, again, I've got a quarter-inch seam set on my machine, because that's normally what I saw with anyway. But with these, it doesn't really matter as long as they're consistent and they'll all be the same. So, if you have your... Um, needle in the middle and go by the side of your foot it's absolutely fine what i would say is when you're turning anything through which is we're going to turn this through once you start do a few stitches and then just reverse back a few stitches and if what happens is what happens to me there is it just got a little bit caught up just lift your foot and go move along and down again so now when we do corners like this how i do them is i don't like to pivot i like to sew off the end Pull it Why round. Why can't I just think of friends? It, pivot. Oh, pivot. I'm going to get in trouble now because I don't. You've watch not friends. seen it. Oh, there's a scene where they're trying to get a sofa up a stairway. I don't uh, watch And they pivot friends. a lot. Well, they try to anyway. I'm sure <laughs> anyone that's seen it will be thinking exactly <laughs> the same as me right there. Um, and is that a bit of an unconventional way of doing it then, Bernie? It's not. It's an alternative way, Joe. Alternative. But what happens is that. it strengthens your seam because what's going to happen is you're stitching all the way down that side off the edge. 
and then you're stitching from the edge on this side so you've got a big cross of thread there if you pivot and you stop and pivot you've only got one thread so when you're poking through um like poking your corners through when you've um, turned it what you're going to get then is more strength than just one thread so that's how I like to do it. But I, I, always, um, I always like to say that it is an alternative. It's not an instead of. Because everyone finds their own way. And to be fair, sometimes I forget. And then I will pivot. So, right. So I've got those stitched now. I know the thread's really light, so you're not going to see it too clear. What I'm going to do now is trim my corners before I turn it through. So you're just going to trim the bulk off. And if you were doing the curved one, you would clip in, clip into it just as you go on round. And then I'm going to turn it through. Ta -da. And then this is where you don't use your scissors. Right. Lockdown nails actually work really well. <laughs> so they have, I have got a good use for a lockdown nail. How long are we before the lockdown nails are going to come off? Are there going to be a home lockdown nail job happening soon? Oh, I don't know. I'm dreading it. I'm hoping they reopen before I have to think about it. Because last year, I took them off. Oh, they, they were horrible. So I'm, I'm trying not <laughs> the to. Best said, less said about those. The better yeah, by the I'm time, trying not to think about it. Yeah, I'm trying not to think. It'll be right. They'll be right. Be a nice pale colour. So I've just got my iron body. I'm for, I've got another tip for you. So when you go out the side here, something you know, if you iron straight on, and then on here you get like a little pleat, and it, it looks. You look and think, oh, it's not pressed very well. What I do is run it back a little bit with my fingers. And then just give it a little finger press. And then what you find is, then when it goes back over, it's now flat. So I'll do that on the other side. So just run it back a little bit there. And I can feel that my seam's on that side. It doesn't really matter which side it is. So I'll just give it a little finger press like that. And then I can get my iron and give it a bit of a, bit of a press. And then we're ready with this now to put on. Now, what you could do is turn the top in as well. Um, but I think with this one, it's quite a quick, quick project. If you just trim your edges off. Now, oh, I can't remember where I've put. Oh, there it is. So I'm just going to grab my ruler. So we've got the um, 6x24 folding ruler on the show as well. So I'll get my ruler. And what I'm going to do is just trim these um, sort of ugly raggy ends off. Oh, no one wants an ugly, raggy end. Um, Patsy um, says, uh, I was always a pivoter. I didn't think of just going off the end. Uh, great tip. Uh, and Sonia, snooze you lose Sonia says, great pro tip, Bernie. Uh, thank you for that. You're welcome, you're welcome. So all I did there was I just lined up one of my lines on the ruler with my bottom seam here. So if I trimmed that a smidgen, I mean, it, it was literally, where's my bits? Do you know, my friend of mine, uh, John, who's a very accomplished sewer, uh, he buys, I'm going to tell you where he buys them from, he buys a lot of clothes, uh, things like jumpers and plain t-shirts and stuff from Primark, uh, Bernie, and then he customises them himself and he'll put little accents on them. Uh, he's made me a jumper that I can't fit into because I'm too fat at the moment. <laughs> uh, he did it with uh, felt pieces basically and just cut them in different shapes, three different shapes and has put them on the front of a jumper. It looks like a sort of kids TV presenter jumper. It's so, so cool. Wow. Uh, I, I haven't I dug it out for a little while. It might fit actually at the moment. I don't know. I, I really want to wear it at work. But I um, think, did you put a picture on on your Facebook I ages no, I will ago. put a picture of it on actually though when I get yeah, home. Yeah, pop a picture on because it rings a bell actually. Yeah, I think I had taken a photo of it and might have showed you and said that I wanted to try and get it made. Yes. But I did. But I'm actually just thinking, with this here, if you wanted to put an accent pocket on a t-shirt, just to snazz it up a little bit, that would make a great shape, wouldn't it? Just for oh, an accent chest pocket. Yes. Just on a, like a really inexpensive t-shirt, stitch it on, you've got something that's one of a kind and looks awesome. Absolutely perfect. And if you're making clothes anywhere from scratch and you've, the, the pattern that you've got is a really basic pattern, you could use these as pockets as well to, to yeah. you, you know, that's a great idea, yeah, that job. Right. It also does like, look, it buys lots of badges and stuff and then sews those on jumpers and things. Really, really quite an awesome thing to do. Definitely. To create like, really cool clothes without really breaking the budget. No one else is going to have one, are they? No. Right, so if I remember rightly, when I sewed these, I had my needle in the middle, so I'm just going to start the same position. So what I've done there is I've clipped, I've used my quilting clips. 
I've always got them by my side. And I'm just stitching this onto the back. So if I, if I turn this one over, you can see this is from the front, the line of stitches there, but you can't see the raw edges on the back until you turn it over. You can't see them from the front. Um, and I think this is a, it's just a nice, easy project just to get you going. What you could do is use um, binding and have it all encased. But I thought, well, you know, you use that ribbon up recycle it you're not going to have to then um go and buy binding or make binding for this one because you've got that um ribbon that comes with your fabric fabulous there we go so now i've got this little bit done but there's one other thing you get in the builder banner is the letters and that is the personalization so i've got my my um spring i'm ready for spring with my bunting but what you could do then is go further and personalize it so we can see on the package in there that there's letters on here i think well where's where's the letters at bernie so here we go we've got them all here so you get all the alphabet in here as um templates oh fabulous so you're going to put which one's it going to stand out Could on? you use your um, spray again for this? The... Oh, so you're going to... How are you going to... Mm, I would say the stick and stay, a light one, would yeah. just hold it in place while you're drawing around it, yes. Right, awesome. Or... Oh, so you're going to cut it out, are you, that? <clears throat> yeah, that so you draw around it... Yeah. And then cut it out. Perfect. So what you could do, this is brilliant for felt. So if you've got felt, you're going to draw around. But remember, if you're drawing around on something, um, unless you're using the heat erasable pens, make sure you draw it on the back. Okay. Because you don't want your lines shown once you've cut out. Um, the other option is, uh, there's a product called Heat and Bond, which I've run out of, and I, I need to get some ordered because I do use it a lot. And that's a fusible webbing. So there's a there's Bonder Web. There's a few different brands, but it's a fusible webbing, and it comes on like like a, a white piece of paper with glue, like a glue mesh on the back. And you iron it onto the piece of your fabric onto the wrong side, and then put your letter on back to front on the back, draw around it and cut it out. And then what you do then is, we'll say that's our A. You then pop that on your banner to be in bond on the website I it on. So have we got any? some on i bet is oh, it the red yeah. packet sorry is it the red packet if it's the red oh, packet oh, on the us website sorry yeah so the red packet is ideal because that's ultra um weight so you don't even have to stitch that if it's the red one fabulous if it's the heat and bond light you will you can um, adhere that on but then if you're going to wash it you would then need to stitch it um, but glue, you can glue them on as well, you know, but I am going to use these in another project, Joe, so I thought I'll say, I'll not put them on my banner, and it's a little bit of a surprise for you later in the show. Hmm. <laughs> I'm a little tease, Anna. <laughs> what happens, though, if it goes into the, what if it wins the demo of the show, though? Well, then I'll have to go into the demo of the week and then I'll have to hope it doesn't win the demo of the week. Where does it go if it wins demo of the week? Well, it goes into well, the demo of the month. Oh, but you'll get it eventually. And then it wins demo of the month. It could go into the demo of the year. Well, Who we want it too. We want it too. I mean, we're being presumptuous here, but I think it's got a good chance. I really we'll do. We'll see. Yeah, if you want we'll to get see. this uh, build a banner, it's getting very busy. Twenty four ninety nine if you are in the UK. Uh, if you are across in the US, of course, thirty four ninety five, which I think is a fairly minimal investment, uh, considering. Uh, the amount of things you can do with it, the amount of personalization that you're gonna get out of that. Let me just give you a recap quickly as well of some of the other things that are selling very quickly in this show. Uh, 23.99 or 19.96 gets you the quilting pattern reference guide. And yes, it's great for your quilting pattern guides, but it's also awesome for so many other jobs uh, just to making sure you're getting that precision. Uh, you can use it to square off as well as uh, a corner too if you wish to do that. We've also getting very busy across the sprays. UK only for most of these. You've got stick and stay for fabric, which is this one just here, which is fantastic. Remember, if you heat set that, you're gonna be able to wash that too, which is brilliant. Um, the fabric coat now, the fabric coat is awesome. It's a waterproof gel adhesive. It basically turns any of your fabrics into an oil cloth. So you'll make little wash bags, uh, cute little purses or um, you know little wallets. Fantastic for that, 14.99 or 19.95 if you wanna get your hands on that. 
Uh, the paper pattern spray, this was so fantastic. If you are a dressmaker uh, and you end up swearing at your patterns rather than buy them, uh, then this could change that for you, $7.99. Uh, we've also got the fabric shield as well. Um, don't do what I do. Don't pay hundreds of pounds for fabric protection. Just get a few cans of this. I wish I'd have known. I should have known, really, shouldn't I? Six ninety nine if you want to get hold of that one. And you've got your mark away as well. Just kind of like chalk in a can, I guess. Uh, Seven pounds ninety nine if you want to get your hands on that. They are UK only, apart from the fabric coat. That one is available in the US. The Gemini Quilting Border Guides five piece collection, fifty four pounds or seventy eight dollars. If you want to grab hold of that, you've got in there the geometric wave, the decorative panel, the jewel, and the heart, and you get the gloves as well. Platinum members can save twenty seven seventy five or thirty nine thirty five based on the full price um, what I would say too is you can get two of them individually if you want to go for individuals pick your own uh, then two 28 pounds or 40 dollars uh, we've also got next the heat erasable fabric pens for you an absolute essential uh, definitely stock up you don't want to be uh, without these ones uh, as you can see a three pack 5.99 or 7.95 uh, now, we've got the embroidery kits on the show. It's the embroidery kit collection uh, we're going to take a quick look at. And these are awesome. If you wanted some gifts, then these are fantastic. I also think if you wanted a starting point into needle craft, these are also really fantastic as well. So what you've got in here is you've got your butterflies, the schmetterlings, you've got the love, you have got the true love, and you've also got dream big. Bernie is going to channel her inner Instagram influencer and do an unboxing for us, uh, which I absolutely love. These, though, if you weren't into needlecraft or hadn't been yet, what a great starting point, Bernie. The absolutely fantastic. You're getting the four in the set, aren't you? I've got the love one here. I thought it was very apt because it's nearly Valentine's Day. It is nearly Valentine's Day. It is. It's nearly Valentine's Not long Day. Now. And it is basically a kit as in you're getting everything you need including the needle so what have we got so we've got the hoop so that's going to be your finished um project to go in there you're getting full instructions with all of the stitches on and this i think is really invaluable because sometimes you'll buy kits and look and think well what do i do well, or it might say do a satin stitch, do a seed stitch, but I don't know what that is. So you're getting all of the details in there with uh, the diagrams on and it tells you A, B, C, so it tells you in the instructions A um, and then go to point B. Now bring the needle back up and go to point C. So it takes you through it really in detail. You're getting all of your embroidery threads that you're going to use. Now, if you've got your own embroidery threads or you get some of the embroidery threads on the show, you actually can use different colours. You don't have to use um, the ones that are in the kit. And then if I open this one up, you're getting the printed design on your fabric. Now, the fabric is a lot bigger than the... Oh, you get the needle as well. I forgot to tell you that. You even get the needle. So you need a pair of scissors, really. That's all you're going to need. How fabulous. So here's the design here. And if I put the hoop on, can you see how it fits... In there you're getting a lot of space around here so what that means is you can use that hoop for another project that i'm maybe going to do as the little prezi for joe oh don't tell him he didn't hear he didn't hear um, excited. and then you could use this make use this as a patchwork square in a quilt or a cushion so you don't have to put it in the hoop i mean i think that would be fantastic do it um, they don't take a long time to embroider neither if you're just sitting in front of the tv on an evening or you know you've had sunday lunch and they say oh what can i do this afternoon and sometimes you can't be bothered to go up in your sewing room or your paper craft room so you've just got a nice little bit of stitching and you can sit there with your family or on your own like me with my dog and she'll chase the thread while i'm trying to do something um <laughs> but i still love her you saw pictures of her the other week as well if anyone was watching um and then i see you can just get that done in you know an afternoon or a couple of evenings and then make it into a cushion or like I say do it as the kit is and pop it in the hoop and you get like I say you're getting everything in there and I just think they're absolutely lovely and you can't go wrong really with it and even if you didn't want to do the stitching that it tells you or the stitching on the pictures you could just do um you could just follow the printed lines and just go around and do like running stitch or a back stitch as well fantastic yeah so there you go. So you're getting four, you're getting the choice. But I do, I do like the love one. 
Mm, uh, lots of you chatting away, lots of questions still coming in. Can you explain, Bernie, for Sue... Oh, I don't know if I can say this. So, oh, Sue so Alex, uh, can you explain how I use the free motion sewing sheet? Confused as to how you do not end up sewing it to your project. Good question. Uh, I right. know we were going to so, have it on the show, weren't we? It did sell out It sold the show. out, yeah, so well done for getting it. So, yeah, so what you do with that, it, does, it makes your surface um, slippier. For, it's another, another aid for, for your free motion. But what you do is when you, you lie it on the bed of your machine, pop your extension table on, lie it on the bed of your machine, and then once it's laid on the bed of your machine, just lower your needle by hand into it, and it'll put a little pin prick, the little needle prick in there, so you've got a little hole. You then take it off, and then what you do is cut a little rectangle out where that hole is, and that then will go over where your um, feed dogs are. I mean, obviously, you'll drop your feed dogs, but it'll sit over there so you've got plenty of space for the needle to go down. Awesome. And that, that's how there you, you are, that's, that's how, how you set it up. Uh, but it comes blank because everyone's machine's different. Oh, so you so don't really you put your hold. own Yeah, so you put your own marking on there, yeah. Great point. Uh, and also, Bernie says I have some uh, Crafts Companion fabric adhesive sheets. Are these the same as Bonderweb? So the fabric adhesive sheets are a lot thicker. So they sort of, it's, it's a similar thing where they will stick things on, but you wouldn't sew through them. Um, you would, it would be something that will stick on and stay on, and they are very strong. I'll tell you what I made with them, Joe. Um, you know our uh, glitter fabric we have? I mm. think there might be bronze on the website, I'm not sure. Um, I cut some bows out in that, but I backed it with the fabric adhesive and then stuck them together to make bows to put um, a little clip in. And I did a little craft fair a couple of years ago, and they flew out. Put a little oh. little silver clip, uh, crocodile clip, I think they called. Um, but I used that fabric adhesive to that to, to stick the two layers together, and they were brilliant, and they, they reinforced it as well, so they give it a bit of structure. Fantastic. So Fantastic. Yeah. Great idea, that. Really, really awesome idea. Uh, keep getting your questions in. We've had loads of questions of we in the show, and I really, really love it. I'm glad that we're all able to uh, learn so much and educate each other uh, during these shows. It's what we are here for. It's what Crafters TV is all about. We are truly interactive, and we bring you great deals, and we bring you great discounts. And uh, if you join our club, we give you even more discounts. Take a look. Welcome to Club Inspire, our free loyalty club. As a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a gold member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order, and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. When you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. We'll send you a completely free quarterly Digimag direct into your inbox, giving you lots of hints, tips, inspiration, additional offers and some sneaky behind the scenes gossip from the team. So what are you waiting for? Become a member of our club today. But uh, also, a uh, fabulous place to be, of course, is in Club Inspire. Uh, so do take a look uh, there at that, which is awesome. Uh, and also, it's free to join as well. So just make sure uh, you get yourself in the club. Um, right, uh, I want to share with you some more items. Uh, embroidery hoops uh, are here. Uh, these are absolutely huge. You've got three different sizes in here from 13 centimetres right the way up to 25 centimetres 
as well, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, £9.99 uh, and £14.95 or fourteen ninety five if you are in the US, which is awesome. Uh, so do check those out. Uh, right, we also have uh, the embroidery packs. We've got the essentials first for you, which are these ones uh, just here. Absolutely gorgeous. Brights is your next option that you've got, which are these ones here. They're all the same... Uh, all the same price uh, after the brights you've then got these ones which is your vintage uh, then we also have the pastels uh, we have got the festive which is this one just here uh, we've got the soft tones uh, and we've also got the rich tones as well um, right, uh, £7.99 or, or $10.95 uh, is your price on those right Bernie what would you like to show us with these I'm going to play with the hoop so I'm, when you see this I'm, I'm so excited I'm so excited but I'll show you some samples first of what you can do with hoops so I love hoop art and I think anything sometimes when you make something you think oh I'll make another cushion make another bag I don't want to make a quilt I don't want to make any clothing what can I do get the hoops out because they're absolutely fantastic and this is with our so lovely fabric as well so look at this so this is, you've got a piece of fabric on there, you've got a folded piece of fabric here, so you can actually use it to store your tools in, or anything really. Um, obviously we've decorated it with, oh, the other side, should get my camera angles the right way, shouldn't I? Um, we've decorated it with some felt um, flowers, but again, you can put that hook um, ribbon on the top, recycle some of your ribbon to make something like that or and this is something I did uh, a couple of years ago I did it as a class so this is a this is called a, a it's a folded hat there is a pattern online now Katie Jones a couple of years ago well maybe a month ago did a demonstration on this on one of the it was pre softer side um, so I need to try and find it. When I find it, I'll post, um, I'll post the link, but it may take me a while to find it. So something like that as well, and you're just making that. And then if I turn it right and see, it's just trimmed around the outside um, just to make it. And then also, if you want to do a little bit of free motion. And this recycled ribbon on the top, I know, um, oh, who was one of the viewers said um, they use recycled ribbon. This is what, you know when you get one of them tops and it has the thing in the top and you cut them off the hanging loops that's what one of this is it's a little hanging loop so i'll just pop pop them uh, in oh, my perfect. ribbon jar so cut, and just cut those out so yeah out i always cut them there. out because they get on my nerves they always, they always spring out so they get on my nerves so there's lots of different things you can do with hoops but what i thought i would do today is use our embroidery threads <clears throat> So I've got here the vintage collection. I absolutely love these. And I've picked three out of here. And I've got the pink, the mustard, and the purple. And I've just cut quite a length off. So if you're doing hand stitching with embroidery thread, what I would say is don't cut a piece longer from your hand to your elbow. You don't want it too long because it can get knotted up. But this trick, I'm actually going to, well, it's not a trick, but this method, I'm going to actually do it on the sewing machine. So I do want quite a long length. So I've got three pieces of thread. I've got my hoop here. I've got the small hoop here. But you could do this as any, any size um, hoop out of the set. And then I've just got myself a piece of, this is our pink linen we've had, but you can use cotton, you can use any, any fabric at all. And I've just got some wadding on the back. And I just want to... Um, keep that in place so I'm just going to do a quick spray with the stick and stay I'm not ironing this um, before I do it um, I will maybe give it a press after but I just want it to hold in place so I'll just give it a few little squirts just to hold in place and then just smooth that with your hands is enough to get that like that right so now I'm going now to that builder banner so you know I was saying I was going to do some personalization so I wonder what letter I'm going to get out of here. Let's have a look. Oh, shall we have J for Joe? Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> right, so what I'm going to do is position that in the middle. Now, I want to have it in the middle. So to get the exact middle of my fabric, I've got my reference guide again. So this is where even I'm doing embroidery stitching here, this reference guide just comes into play every time. I'm just going to grab a drink of water so I've got a little tickle. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you go for it. A tipple? Hang on. Tickle. A tipple doesn't fly. Oh, a tickle. A little tickle. Sorry, you had a little tipple in there. <laughs> no, not a little tipple. Oh, I thought you had it's gin in gin. there. <laughs> not gin. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> well, it's nine o'clock in somewhere. Thailand, isn't it? So we're... <laughs> in Thailand. It'll be five o'clock. I'd say sort of like turkey, maybe. That sort of way. <laughs> About five o'clock now, I'd imagine. So what I've got here is I've placed this on the top and all I'm doing is looking at my pink fabric and I'm just looking at, when I cut this piece, Joe, I didn't measure it, so I'm just looking at which lines it's going to evenly go in and it's going to go in about the seven and a half to eight grids. So it goes up here from two all the way up to 12 in the numbers and then you've got the dash line, which is your half inch increment. So I'm just getting it pretty, pretty centre there. So I know it's centre and then I'm just going to put my little dot in the center using my heat erasable pen and all i've used it for is that dot but how else as quick as that would you be able to find the center of your fabric you could fold it and fold it again and press it but i've got one behind here and i've put some spray on so i don't really want to fold my fabric and give it a crease because i want this to be sitting nicely in my hoop so having that is just perfect for doing that I've lost my J, here we go. Right, and again, this is uh, heat erasable, so if we don't stitch over it, it's gonna disappear as well. So I'm gonna center my J, I'm gonna use that dot there, that's lovely and centered. And then again, I'm gonna get my heat erasable pen, and I'm gonna draw it around. Oh no, I forgot you, I could've put a bit of that spray on to stick it down, couldn't I? So I'm just drawing around it and I say this is heat erasable, it doesn't have to be exact if it's a little bit rough or it goes off a little bit, it's absolutely fine because we're going to put the heat on after and it's going to disappear. Um, Christine Yates says, enjoying the show very much, doing my caring thoughts decoupage. <gasps> Lovely. Ooh, lovely. Uh, Laura Mace's my oldest daughter loves pandas. I'm making a quilt of <coughs> pandas. Each square has a different technique. One is applique, one is embroidered, one cross stitch, etc. Well, that's a really lovely idea, isn't it? That is really good. I love merging techniques. That's a really good idea. Mm. Because sometimes you might you just want to try a new technique, but you don't want to do a big massive project with it. So if you do just a small project with little ones on, that's a, I love that idea, it's fantastic. So what I've got here is I've got my three three threads now I haven't cut them to an exact length but when I was um prepping this at home yesterday I was like right well I want to be able to go all the way around the J but I also want to thread it through the back so I wanted a piece on for be able to get my needle in and I'm just checking that I have yes so I've got a nice uh, like a darning needle in my little uh pin cushion I was just checking that I had it on me um, so what we're going to do is start off on the straight edge because that's the easy edge and we're going to leave a little bit of a train now I've put a zigzag stitch set on my machine and then I'm just popping it over there and then I'm just doing a gentle zigzag now what I would say is you can have a a little practice I'm using a cream thread as well so have a little practice of how wide you want your zigzag and how long but all I'm doing is gently and I've just got my standard foot on here and I just keep getting hold of my threads is this sometimes known as a satin stitch the zigzag stitch or is um, that a different thing it's a little bit wider so a satin stitch is closer together right so it is it's like a narrow zigzag and then when you turn a corner, just make sure if you're turning left, you want your needle down on the right and vice versa. You know, like when you're reversing in the car and you've got to, you think you want to go left hand down, but you need to go right hand down. <laughs> <laughs> and then just get it under there. And then if you find that it's just not caught over, you can just do another little stitch. And this is where, if you've got the needle down position on your machine, it's a great time to use it. If you haven't, you can still do it. You'll just, when you stop, always do your hand wheel to turn it down. But you can see how I'm just gently going around this curve. Oh, it's looking very good. I wanted to do all rainbow colours for your job, but I thought more than three threads might be a bit much uh, to get round them corners. <laughs> so you just keep and lining it up. Go and work your way around. And it'll say if you do find yourself 
and getting in a bit of a knot you could get your little you could get your little scissors and just re-separate them just to get yourself back on track and I said there's no um it's not a race so when you are so especially things like this it's really nice just to take your time because what you'll find is you'll get a you'll get a better finished result and you'll feel better about the project as well whereas if you rush something you one you're not enjoying it because you're rushing um and two you know it's not going to turn out as nice <laughs> as you expected you said for a second in my head you won't enjoy this if you're rushing for a second then i thought oh, <laughs> oh rushing sorry rush <laughs> I, thought, I well, need I can't to talk. Think we're Russia use this. We, <laughs> we, we, can sell, we can sell stuff to Russia. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, I thought you is, went quiet, Joe. I thought, oh, what have I said? In, this is what goes on inside my head, Bernie. You wouldn't it's, want to be in there. It's well, exhausting. it's what comes out my mouth, Joe. That's the thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, Karen's saying she hasn't done embroidery in years, but Bernie is making me think about pulling it out. Uh, very cute uh, and ideal, Bernie. Very practical, says Randy. Uh, Karen says, I've never seen this done before. This is such a great technique, Bernie. It is, it's really good. It's quite therapeutic as well. Mm. Um, what you just need to make sure of, you don't get too hung up on staying on the line because that line really is just a guide for you. And also it's going to iron away. So when I got to the bottom of the J there, it went off a little bit, but I think my curve's nicer. <laughs> so we're going to go, I went proper quick there up the straight bit. And then I've got this little curve here to do. And then I can put it in the hoop. I think this is awesome. Thank it's you far, so much for, doing, for sharing this technique You're with us, welcome. Bernie. I just hope you get it one day. One Obviously. day. <laughs> uh, Beth says, I love embroidery and cross stitch. I have one kit, but I haven't done it yet. I sometimes incorporate smaller needle projects into my card making. I do all hand embroidery. Yes. How fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, Kelly yeah. does cross stitch, doesn't she? She does some fabulous oh, does. Uh, cross stitch. She was on Craig's Wake Up uh, call with Craig uh, a little while back last week, I think, maybe all the week before, uh, she sharing is. some of her uh, ideas with us, which is awesome. So there we go. We've got our J for Joe. Love that. And I've gone really all the way around. It. And then I can say, what you're going to do is thread, thread these through the back. Yeah. But I've got one that I did yesterday that I've threaded through the back just for oh, quickness. Lovely. So we've got, you've got two. So actually, Joe, even if this does get one, I'll hoop the other one and then you've still got one. So you'll end up with two. Fantastic. So if I quickly, so I've put that through the back and just tied a little knot. I'm just going to trim them. And then you're going to keep that thread because that's long enough for you to thread and use in another project. And then you're going to get your hoop. And with the hoop, um, you're just going to unscrew the top. Oh, you'd iron it as well to iron your marks away. You're going to unscrew your top. And don't take the whole screw out. But if, it, if you do go too far, it will go back in. And then you're going to put your hoop, put the sealed, uh, the round one on the back. And centre it as best you oh, can. So you put the hoop, so you put the design to the back, do you? Oh, yeah. no, this, are we... Uh, Oh, I'm confused, Bernie. In my head, it happened all happened the other way round. Ah, right. Yeah. And then it's gone in. Now, it's quite thick because obviously I've got that wadding in there. So, I say, you do have to open that up. Got a bit. There we go. It. So, it's going to go in like that. And then you just, you want it to be like drum tight. And then you're going to tighten this up. And I won't, I'll let you know the next step but i won't actually do it now because it'll take me a while to do but i can do it before the end of the show you're just going to trim all this off and then we had the rib oh do you know what joe um we're not going to use that for stitching i'm going to use it to make the hanging loop how that would look fab wouldn't it amazing so what did you just cut all that excess off now so i just cut the excess off the back yeah because i didn't need it but yeah. i can tie that in a loop and feed it through there for the hanging loop. But I mean, everything that's on the outside of the hoop, would you just cut away now? Oh yes, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna trim it round. So I'm done. Yeah. Awesome. Love that. Uh, if you want to go, of course, for those uh, embroidery hoops, absolutely you can. Nine ninety nine or fourteen ninety five. Uh, if you want to get your hands on that, I've got some more stuff I want to share with you. Uh, the uh, border guides firstly uh, take a look at these these are an awesome deal you've got a great saving uh, here with this one you're saving 16.95 or 
five. Uh, you've got the geometric wave, the decorative panel, uh, the, sorry, decorative petal, the jewel, and also the heart. And you get the gloves in there too. And you can do some of these awesome style uh, quilting designs in here as well. I love all of that uh, flower. Now, can you see that? Just really, really awesome. Absolutely love that. Uh, then we've got this one here, which is, I'm guessing is the wave. Oh, I love that one. And last but by no means least, uh, we've also got this one just here, uh, which is yeah. lovely. Uh, that's got that flower. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's quite a light thread there, uh, but it really is awesome. They're quite modern. Uh, I'm guessing, has this been done with the quilting, uh, the builder block that we looked at, the, the, what was the Roman word? What was the word we didn't, couldn't think of earlier? Amphitheatre style one. The um, it hasn't used those dyes. No, that one I think has been done with the fabric cutter. So you know ah. our big 15 by 15 and a half inch yes. where you can cut all your strips. That's been that's been done on. Brilliant. That's been um, done on that. Shadia says, Joe, please tell Bernie thanks for that technique. I learned that by stitching. I learned that by stitching by hand easier with the machine. So uh, thank you for that, Bernie. Uh, so brilliant, you've got all of those in there. If you want to go for them individually, they're on two for £28 or $40 as well. Uh, so there is something for everyone uh, in this show today. Uh, we've also got available uh, the Builder Block too. Let me share a picture of that with you. Uh, you can make four, six, eight, nine, and 12 inch blocks with this one, which is absolutely awesome. 89.99 or 125.95, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, now, we also have the expansion packs as well. Uh, so you've got the squares, which is this one here. Again, uh, all the different sizes. You can use this as an expansion. You can also use it if you want to uh, as well to, um, as a standalone, 26.99 or 4045 uh, if you want to go for that one. Uh, now we've also got the half squares uh, for you, yeah. if you will go for the half square triangles. Same price, same information, exactly the same, just in that different shape. And we've got them as well for you in the quarter square too, which is fantastic. So do go for those ones as well, uh, if you want to go for those. Right. Now I'm going to come back and we're going to reference it again. I know it was the first thing that you talked about, Bernie, uh, but it was the uh, reference guide, uh, the quilting pattern reference guide, mm -hmm. which is, of course, going to be great for your quilting pattern guides, but for so much more as well. Uh, 23.99 or 19.96 if you want to get your hands on that one. <gasps> You've finished it and it looks gorgeous, Bernie. I've finished it. I'll just trim quickly around the back and put that ribbon on. And then look at that. Isn't it Love fab? It. Absolutely. Absolutely fab. Love it. So there we go. So it's gonna be, is that going to have to be the demo of the show? Because is that the well, it depends one? if it depends what people vote for. Well, what it? else is there though? To vote so we've got for? The, the we've got the bunting. Oh, bunting. We've got the ninja block, but I think yeah, yeah. or the hoop. So we'll, we'll vote on that towards one, yeah. the end of the show. I uh, in that case, then uh, if uh, yes, <laughs> we'll get a vote on that and it will go into the uh, demo of the show. Right. Why do we need this reference guide? It just, whenever we bring this uh, on our softer side of live shows, Bernie, it's always busy, every single time. It's one of those things that people just seem to eternally love. What is it about it that pe keeps people coming back for it? It does, so it's giving you that guide for placement. That's the best, I'll say it. Now, this is the fabric that I drew on previously using it. And obviously, a heat erasable pen, I can iron them away, but I'm not going to iron them all away because I want to show you um, the extra thing that you can do on this one as well. So if I place this over, what I've done is, oh, hang on, let me get rid of my iron board. It's like being at home here, I have everything all spread around me. So I've lined this up and it doesn't have to be on a smaller piece. Obviously this piece is smaller, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, you're um, excused. I need a little tipple. <laughs> a tipple? It's that gin. It's obviously uh, playing. I'll have a little sip. I'll have a little sip of my gin. You have a sip of your gin. You you do that. Don't you worry. It just if it's not gin. No, no it's, it's definitely water. <laughs> <laughs> definitely water. I forgot my tonic. <laughs> so it is water. So yeah. So I've got this. I've lined it back up on there just to put that line back in there. Um, of what I had. So on here you've got a grid system. So you've got a centre dot in there and it goes up from two inches and then it goes up in um, quarter inch lines all the way up but that's giving you the inches. So if you want two and a half inch square marking you can follow that line in there all the way up to twelve and a half all the way up but obviously you can have it on a, bi a bigger bit of fabric but i've drawn in here which are these grooves that then you you can see here that we've got some extra lines 
So if what you can do is if you rotate it slightly and place those lines onto the ones I've already drawn, line back up your centre dot. So I've got my centre dot lined up there and then I've lined up these on the ones that I've drawn. If I go in on a different colour, I'll do red because I've got a choice because I've got three in the set. I've got, I've got loads. I love my heat erasable pens. Now, I was watching Lizzie last week, and a great tip that I didn't uh, think about. So Lizzie um, stores hers pointing downwards, so the ink always stays at the end. I used to store mine upwards, so I've started storing them downwards, especially in my tool tidy, um, which I know we've got on the show today. If anyone hasn't got any uh, good storage, the tool tide is perfect. So if I lift this up now, now the original lines were in blue and I've drawn these new lines in red. Can we see now how we've actually got a grid system? Yeah. So if you're then placing your pieces, oh, I'm thinking of something I can put on. Oh, let me use my clips. See, this is another thing for your clips. If you want to place something, you can <laughs> use your clips for little, little props. So if I want to have all my applique pieces in a particular place but then with these ones I only want them on I need another clip I've only got I haven't got another purple one out of us there's a rogue red one well ignore <laughs> the rogue red one so can you see how you can you can use them to decide where you're going to put your pieces so if you already want the four corners doing. And the other thing these work great with are your um, quilt and pattern guides. So the ones that you can rotate. So we brought a set out of rotating ones. The border ones actually we do, you can ro rotate those as well. So actually, this is a, it's a great system for, for your placement. But the other thing as well, which is what I did before, is what I like to use it for as well. It's a really good size square ruler. So if you doing your projects and you, or you've done your blocks and you need them um, squaring up, you can cut it around the outside because this is made of acrylic the same as our um, rulers are. So you're going to get that lovely 90 degree angle as well and you can use it for that. The other thing as well, it looks a bit cloudy. The reason for the cloudiness, it's got a non, uh, well, it's anti-slip technology on it. So it looks like frosted. You know, like your bathroom window drawer looks a bit frosted. Oh, that's, that's well, what... with any luck. <laughs> you so know. That, that'll st that stops it slipping as much. It gives it a little bit more grip. Um, and it's on both sides. So you can actually do it from the other side as well. Obviously, the numbers are back to front. But if you just wanted to draw the grid lines, you know, you can have it the other way as well. So, yeah, so definitely want to have, like I say, I always have mine out unless I'm here using it. I always have it out on my table at home because even if I just want to cut a piece of fabric and I'm not measuring that fabric, I can just grab this and it's always there at the side of my desk to use it. Fabulous. I absolutely love it. I think it's awesome. 23.99 or 19.96. Let's go through uh, the sprays that we've got on the show. All of these, barring the fabric cutter, are, uh, are UK only. So uh, let's go back through those. In fact, do you know what, Bernie? These are so busy. Do you fancy doing Spray School 2.0? How do you feel about that? Oh, yeah. Do you do it again? Spray School <gasps> 2.0. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Yes. Which one would you Literally, like me to do first? Uh, I think we should just do them all. I think should we should do them just all. Do, just, do you know what, Bernie? You you do you. That's what I say. Uh, do you, me. you you beat to the beat to the uh, you march to the beat of your own drum, Bernie. In this spray school, <laughs> right? <laughs> it took me a while to get that one out there. Well, I'm going to use. I'm, I'll you. I tell you what. I'm going to use that one first that you're pointing on this the awesome. orange one because I've got this piece here that I applique that other bit on. Now I did. Um, Oh, hang on. I put it oh, in just the go, Let me just go through the so options for these. So you've got stick and stay, ah, which is this one just go. here. Uh, so this is your first one, the stick and stay. Uh, that's awesome. And then what you've also got then is this one just here, which is your paper pattern spray. Uh, the fabric shield, wish I'd have known about this uh, six months ago. Uh, and you've then got the mark away there as well. <laughs> and we've got the fabric coat as well. Fabric coat's not a spray. It's kind of like a gel, like a like a a paste almost, isn't it? But you pop that over your, um, it's a gel that you pop over your cotton fabrics and it turns it into oilcloth. 
Makes it water I'll, resistant. I'll really demo awesome, that a little it? bit, Joe, as Will well. You? I've I got, love well, it. I'll do show you a little bit of it and I've got I brought some samples as well. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what it reminds me of? And I think, I don't think they're actually on the high street anymore. I think they may have gone bust. But you know, you get lots of the nice, like, um, ditzy print fabrics, put that on and, it, and turn them into little wallets and purses and stuff. It looks just like the Calf Kidston stuff that you used to be able to get hold of. Ooh, Calf Kidston yes. is no more, you know. Did you know that? No, Bernie? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, during the first lockdown, actually, I think they went into liquidation. I, I might be wrong. Uh, you can go to joeremmansfactchecker.com after the show and check that fact. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure that Calf Kidston Kidston is no more. Oh, you know, I didn't know that. Which is a shame because they had beautiful things. They do fabrics as well. Yeah. Yeah, really nice stuff. Yeah, definitely. She did, uh, she did a lot. She had, I remember going up to Edinburgh and there was, I went in the shop at Edinburgh um, as well. So I'm just uh, happily cutting some little letters out here just quickly. Um, oh, you can still get it online. Just, uh, all of the bricks and mortar high street stores uh, are no more, so you can still get it on. Ah, take right. It back. Take it, yeah. And if you're watching, anyone from Calf Kidston is watching, we love you. We do. My <laughs> friend, my friend just, has just some... Just so we don't get told off. I know, my friend has some glasses that are... Uh, yeah. Uh, Calf Kidston, I was like, oh, I didn't know you could my get My ones are... What are they? My ones are barber. I didn't even realise until the other day. A barber obviously make like wax jackets, don't they? After I'd bought them, I came in and Laura was in, oh, they're barber. My dad works for barber. Yeah, Look, I've done. Did you know they made glasses? Yeah, oh yeah. Look what I've done, Joe. Fabulous. Bit of love, bit of love. So L is for the way you look at me, Bernie. Yeah, of course, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the orange stick and spray on here. So I'm going to go back to that little uh, little tip that I had before. I've got them on my ironing board. I don't want them to blow away with the spray. So I'm putting them on a bit of paper. I'm just pinning them on. Oh, a bit extra pin. Pin in them on so they don't go anywhere. And if you've got our um, stick away spray, I've had them to hopefully it'll still be in stock on the website. That's great for if you get this, like if you want to clean your pins, um, any sticky residue, it'll, it'll come off. So don't think you're going to um, gung your pins up with this because it will, they will come off. There we go. Right, so, and then, so all I've done is I put it on, so this is a, a permanent adhesive. It's temporary at first, so I've put that on there. I can take it off and reposition it. Until the heat goes on there, it's not going to, um, it's not going to stay in place. And then I've got my love, it looks like an egg. And then I've got my little E. There we go. See, so yeah, what I should have done is use my, um, Templates out the what you call it? Build a banner. <laughs> I couldn't remember oh, the name so. of it. <laughs> right. So then I'm going to get my iron. And again, this is it's 45 seconds um, on each one. So I'll just give it a bit of a light press just to get them uh, going. Um, but this is great. I mean, I I do use this predominantly for um, applique work, but also, you know, if if you've got a hem that's come down and you haven't got time to sew it or you you don't do a lot of sewing maybe and you might be a paper crafter watching um you can use it to spray on the bottom of your hems if your hems come down and then iron it for a temporary fix um instead of using the stapler as um one of my school friends put put a picture online the other day she's a nurse and a trouser hem had come down so she actually stapled it bless her <laughs> So that now is it needs uh, 45 seconds on each one and that then will stick. So that's your um, the orange spray. So let me go through the other ones. Which one next, Joe, would you like? Oh, Fabrico. Fabrico. Yes, because yeah. we haven't done the Fabrico, have we? Right. I let's, love the Fabrico. I think it's awesome. Let's get the Fabrico. So the Fabrico. So what it is, it turns your fabric waterproof. I don't have much left in mine, as you can see, but I've had this ages, so I do use I do use quite a lot of it. It goes a long way as well. And it's like a I would say like a thick hair gel sort of consistency. I'm don't just put gonna it in your hair though. Um, no, don't no, put it in your hair. Just for clarity. Yeah, don't no, put don't hair. put it like your hair, but the consistency of it. <laughs> now, would you believe that this tissue box holder has been decoupaged 
and then it's been treated with Fabricort, so it is now waterproof. And was it so just a tissue box? It was, it's a, like a thin plywood. Okay. So then it's put um, tissue paper decoupage on and then um, the fabric on. So if you've got that in a humid area, so on your bathroom windowsill, if it's going to get smashed or whatever, that's going to stay um, waterproof on awesome. there. So, and also, you know, if you're putting them on bibs, we can put them on bibs. So that would have started off as like a soft This is piece just of cotton. cotton. Yeah, and it's soft on the back. It's cotton on the back, but it's got oh, this sheen to, on I it. I need you to, I need, can I have that over here? I need Which would you like? I want a feel of the bib. The bib. Yeah. Do you want the box as well? Oh, I'll you can the have the bib. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then also, now this is a bit small for me, Joe, but we've got a little apron. So if you're making some little oh. aprons for the children, I, think, obviously, I might need a bigger apron. We're going to need a bigger apron. <laughs> for yeah, me, I'll need Bernie. a bigger apron. <laughs> needs to be. This is just like my top half. But this is great because obviously, if you're homeschooling as well, you're doing art or even baking and things like that. You've got it on now. What you do is you apply coats periodically to your fabric. Um, and then you let it dry for about 20 minutes to, to an hour. It depends how thick a coat you've put on. And then you go back and reapply another coat. So you know, like you see your paint in the living room needs three coats. So you let it dry, put another coat on, and then leave it overnight. And then the next day, you're going to put over like um, some parchment paper, or if you've got an applique sheet, over the top, and you're going to iron it. And when you iron it, I'm going to tilt this one and see if you can, you might be able to see the sheen if it just reflects off the lights. Can you see the sheen on it there? Just see the sheen on it there. So what it's done, it's put that waterproof coating on there. So if I'll quickly, I'll... It's oh. a bit like a wax jacket kind of feeling, isn't it, yes. after it's done? Yes, I'll use my bit of paper that I had here. What is I'll cartonage? Just... Say again, sorry, Someone's George. saying, Tonya's saying, I do cartonage. This would be great for that. Oh, I don't isn't know. Isn't that, that fabric over paper and cardboard? I yes. don't know what that is. Now, not... I need... I need a spatula and I don't think I've got oh, one. Oh no. Oh, oh, well, Mary, Mary Pat says, I love the tool tidy. Great for storage. A great inspiration, says Coletta as well. So lots of you loving this show. And I only have about 10 minutes left. Don't forget, it's not the only show today. Oh no, I've got a launch party uh, coming up with Debbie uh, at 4 p.m. here in the UK. So just over an hour and 10 minutes time. And then after that, of course, we'll have the second instalment of the Craft Vault. Myself and Debbie coming uh, up with that a little bit later so make sure you join us uh, for both of those shows as well really exciting she was on fine form yesterday was our debbie uh, so i'm sure we'll have a laura laura laughs uh, during that 4 p.m show uh, make sure you tune in for that <laughs> i'm sure are you, you are will. really improvising is that a paintbrush i can see yeah so there? i've used the back end of the paintbrush to get it out of the tub because i don't want to mess up the the bristles i actually use a paintbrush at home but i forgot to bring it so what i've done is i've Plopped some on me fabric. Now I've put it on the back or the front, it doesn't matter because it will soak through. And then I've just got a piece of card and all you do is just spread it over. So, so I'm once sure... You this, once you've put this on, can you wash these, this fabric now after this? Once it's been three, la three coats, leave it overnight, iron it the next day, then it's washable. So you awesome. can actually see the shine on that now. You can see the shine on that. So that's all you do. You just put it on. And what I do is I have, I bought a cheap um, tablecloth, like a PVC yeah. tablecloth, just a cheap one. And I use that on my table. I put my pieces on and then um, paint them all and then leave them and then paint them all. Put it on with my paintbrush and leave them. You can use a spatula or a yeah. palette knife. And then they just peel off nicely whereas if you leave if you put it on paper you might pull some of the little bits of paper off with it as well so something that's it's not going to soak through one two to put it on and yeah and that's your fabric coat and i say it makes i mean like picnic sets as well um we've actually in the sample box which i haven't got out we've um one of the teams actually put some um designs onto a pair of plimsolls oh, nice. as well and made them waterproof so, so it's, you it's can a really use good. it to like fabric decoupage almost, really, uh, if yeah. you wanted to as well. I love this. I love that this has been put on here. And it makes it really nice and sturdy, what she's... Oh, fabricage. That's what we're going to call it. Fabricage, decoupage, fabricage. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, this, it really does... You can really tell the difference. So for something like this, handmade by Debbie Thompson, this was. For something like this, then, would you treat the fabric first and then stitch it, or would you stitch it and then treat the fabric afterwards? 
So it's some, it depends. More, I used to always say that I would cut out my fabric first and then treat my, um, then treat it. But if so you're you doing... So you treat it before you stitched it? Yes, okay, but I would cut perfect. my fabric out first. But if you say doing die cutting, then treat, treat a bigger bit and then you can die cut it from there. So yeah, so because uh, uh, again, I'm being frugal, I don't want to waste it. So okay. if you, so I tend to cut my pieces out first. However, I know we didn't have time to do it, but I was going to um, if you cut fabric coat the bunting, ah. do one of those. So that I would do that finished once it's finished project, mm -hmm. then then do it. When so, we treat it, do we have to be worried about it shrinking the fabric or anything like that? No, no, nope, it awesome. has no effect. But it does need to be cotton. Okay. Um, I wouldn't. You could try it on other fabrics. Anything with a pile, I would say it won't work on. So what it does, it soaks in, and then when it dries, and then when the heat um, is applied, it that's what it toughens it up. So it and gives it and seals it. So it is really good. Um, can I do the pattern? Can I do the pattern spray again, Joe? Uh, yes, please. I reckon so. We've got time, haven't we? It's fantastic. It's flown over. Before, when you went, oh, it's two o'clock, I was like, no way. Hmm. No way. <laughs> Wait, so it is, we've got six minutes left on the show. Can you believe it? Wow. It flies by, wow. isn't it? Absolutely flies by when you're having fun. Burning. Right. Let's get me, uh, oh, this is my dusty fabric. We'll just dust that off a little bit. Be Rachel, nice. oh, no, sorry. Yes, Rachel says, no, Deborah says, sorry. Rachel's our social media superstar for today. I'm getting confused there. Uh, says, I have really enjoyed the oh. show today. I think this is the first time that I've watched the entire show. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I've um, dropped my nozzle, Joe. You've lost your nozzle? I've, it, I've oh, dropped what it. What do you like? Oh, I um, think it's Hang on. I'll, uh, I'll Deborah I'll... says as well, I've purchased this, but I've never used it. Uh, this is great. Um, and also, uh, yes, we, we got to that question of uh, mollies if you can use it yes three coats and an iron and it's good then to go into the washer you found your end i found it yeah good. i was so excited taking the top off <laughs> i think it, well i think it's gone right under the counter but i've took one the universals so i've took one off my other spray right so what the paper pattern spray is is basically it's a, a the glue in the can um activates with heat and when it cools down the the glue sort of deactivates, but then when you heat it again, it reactivates. And I've done this, uh, I'll say enough to 12 times, I think it might have been more, um, when I did some foundation paper piece and I kept gluing, sticking the fabric to the paper. My papers, when you see them, are all threads. Um, but what you've so I've got just a, a pattern here. This is just um, copy of paper. So I'm just going to give it a light spray. You don't need to be heavy handed with it, but you can reapply it. So if you get a bit where you, it's maybe wearing at that end, but not that end, you can reapply it just as one section. So I've sprayed that 10 or 15 seconds, let it dry. And then I'm just going to pop it onto my fabric. Now, it's coming pretty much straight off there. You think, oh, well, that's not worked because I haven't put any heat on it. So I'm going to get the iron and then you pop the iron on and it makes it um, like them sticky notes that you get, them yellow ones, all different colours. Um, and it just peel, it stays on. So you don't have to put any pins in. You're not going to have any problems when you're cutting out, pricking yourself with your pin um, or distorting the pattern if it's an intricate pattern. And then it just peels off. Now, the other thing what this is good for, which I forgot about, is English paper piecing. So if, you, if you've got a hexagon and your paper's a hexagon, spray the back of your hexagon, put that onto your fabric, and then that's going to hold it in place while you stitch them together. So that's now cool now. I've got no residue on my fabric at all, just a bit of chalk off my um, microwave. And I'm popping it back on. It's cold now, so it won't stick. It's just there. So I get the iron out again. Reactivate the heat, the glue with the heat. And I'll hold this one up and you'll see that it's not going to drop off. And then the other thing is great with the, your tissue patterns as well. So there we go. That's not falling off at all. That's staying on until I peel it off. And it is really satisfying when you peel it back like that. And then the other thing is this tissue, your tissue paper patterns. 
that if you've had these and you've got pins in, they've torn, uh, I mean, I've torn this one just to make it a smaller piece, but all of these pieces have been treated about five months ago. I remember demoing these on purpose. I left these all folded up. And as you can see, they're not sticking together, but these have been treated with the spray. And to prove they've been treated with the spray, did I spray that one? No, I didn't spray that, it was that one. I'll get the right one that I sprayed. If I now put the heat back on, after Fabulous. five months sitting in a plastic bag. Bernie, we've got two minutes left. Wow. It's gone. And the last, there six, go. four, the last five minutes have flown by. Uh, that looks absolutely awesome. Seven pounds and ninety-nine pence if you want to get your hands on that. No pins. That is fabulous, says Nancy. Uh, loads of love for this show, Bernie. This has been a very info informational show. Thank you so much for all the demos and great tips. It has been great, Bernie. Do you know what? I've really enjoyed uh, spending the last couple of hours with you in the studio. Do you know what? Also, I'm thankful for that you stood over there and not over there because I had an accident with the clippers last night. But I won't show you that <laughs> because I've got a massive chunk missing out this side. Honestly, oh, so it's a sure. good job I'm looking that way, not that way. So uh, you'll have to. Use your little um, <laughs> as your an little earring just to hide it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I will, Bernie. It's oh, been an absolute you. pleasure. I hope we get to do this all again soon here, here in the craft room. Uh, take care. We'll see you back here on Crafts TV really soon. Um, don't forget, <laughs> check out all of the whole show. Shop the show on the website craftscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu, uh, and make sure you uh, have checked out your basket. Uh, big thanks to Bernie. Big thanks to you guys at home as well. We will be back with you in one hour's time with a launch party to so do what you need to do grab some food grab a drink uh, but make sure you're back here in one hour's time i'll see you then take care